I say long before his existence, the word went through the fire. Long before his existence, you know, or when it be long before he came in the flesh, you know, the word was tried, the word was tested, the word was put on display, the word was put out there, and the enemy was looking for that valuable seed. He was looking for that word and how to destroy that word. But God said, he says, I will watch over my word in order to perform it. I decree over your life today. There was a word that God has spoken in your life. Uh, and the reason why the test and the trials came in your life, according to the four parables in the word of God, he says, the, word, the, the trials comes for the sake of the word. You still have to be professional. I want to say that again. So it doesn't matter how much faith you have. You need to equip yourself. The Bible says study to show yourself approved, a workman that need not to be ashamed. So you have to equip yourself and really go into understanding how to model whatever you do to the best of your ability. And not trial, trial and error, trial and error, trial and error. You, you know, trial and error is okay if you have the time. But our biggest enemy is time. People that are working in hospitals, they know how people regret wasting time on nonsensical things, things that does not add up in their lives. So we have come now in the month of July, which are rapidly, rapidly coming to a close. We have got four months left or five months left to end this year let's say four months because in December there's not much going on <laughs> hello so these four months you must make them count you must review according to some of us need to review according to our age <laughs> ask yourself how many how many uh, uh, Valuable, uh, how many good years do you have left in your life? Amen. Now for the world, retirement is at 55. Early retirement. <laughs> retirement is 60. Parcella is 10 to 70. Seven, 70 is the expiry date, according to the Bible. <laughs> Hello? Now, those of you that are the sons of Abraham can still embrace, you know, another 50 years. But remember now, that 50 years does not demand uh, to slow down. <laughs> the, the pace, as you get older, the pace becomes faster. Hello? Remember when you were young? Uh, a week took long. But now that you're old, I <laughs> and you're trying to stay, keep the pace for time. No, 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 no. For us who are, who are older, uh, minutes become seconds. Hours becomes, become minutes. Days becomes hours. Weeks become days. And months become weeks because I, we accelerating during this time. We can start recording now. So now, in this month of, of July, we spoke about three different things. The test, the trial, the tribulation. And how do we navigate through that? And this, uh, today we are closing this specific series on test trials and tribulation in our lives. And I'm going to start by uh, just giving you uh, uh, synonyms or, you know, uh, just words that speaks or highlight or, you know, just amplify these words. Test, number one, uh, is an examination. It is, it, a test is not evil. 
Because immediately, you know, when you go through a test or when you go through a challenge within your life, you say, Lord, what have I done? But that challenge or that test in your life is just, you know, to literally test your resilience. To test your endurance. To test whether you are able to, you know, rise to the occasion or what that occasion demands. Amen. So three, three words for test. It's examination and assessment where we evaluate how far you've come. And then lastly, uh, it's the same word for challenge. So don't see a test as evil. I want you to understand that when a test comes, it's an examination that you've got to pass. You've got to put, you've got to put that uh, you know, demand on, 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 on yourself and say, you know, I've got to pass this test. A lot of people want to sleep through the test. Or they want to tranquilize themselves through the test. I need to, you know, just take something for me, you know, not to uh, feel this pain or feel this thing. And then, you, you know, you try to tranquilize yourself through the test. Or occupy yourself through the test. Or you pay yourself through the test. Yes, sir. Or, you know, <laughs> or dacha yourself through the test. <laughs> you know, no, 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 no. This, you, you have to face the test. You've got, to, you've got to pass the test. You've got to overcome during that time of testing. Amen. Say to your neighbor next to yourself, don't drag yourself through the test. Don't close your eyes in the test. Don't sleep through the test. You've got to pass the examination. You've got to, you know, you, you've got to go through that examination in your life with flying colors. You've got to say to yourself, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. You need to say to yourself that I will overcome. You've got, to, you've got to say in your heart of hearts, you know, that this is something, this is a season in my life that is going to pass. Amen. Amen. Then you need to assess and you ask yourself, how far have I gone? Because remember, you set yourself certain goals. You said, give, gave yourself certain, uh, you know, uh, visions and goals within your life that, you know, by this time I'm going to be there. But, you know, you can't go further in life if you've not passed the test. Because remember, it's not going to get easier. Now you, you ask, is that Apostle Neil speaking there? I say it's not going to get easier. It's going to get tougher. When you go to the next level of your challenge, you, it's not going to get easier. But if you pass this test, that test becomes a testimony. Of what you have overcome in years gone by. And you can assess and say, no, no, no. I have gone through that. I've seen this before. This looks familiar. And this is how I got through that. Hello? But now the challenge is just bigger. The bar is just raised a little bit higher. And God wants you to overcome that. Because he's the one that is going to give you the strength. He's, gonna, he's the one that is going to give you the power to go through that. Amen. And you need to understand that th these are challenges in my life. And many of us throughout this week have gone through various or different kinds of challenges. The key in every challenge is not to give up. I say the key in every challenge is not to give up. The key in every challenge is that I'm going to press through. The key in every challenge is that I'm going to overcome. The key in every challenge is to have it in your mind that I am going to rise above this challenge and I'm going to come out tops. I am going to pass every test, every examination in my life and you will assess at the end and do an evaluation. You know, this is how far I have come in this challenge. A trial in your life. Uh, the, the Hebrew word for trial is Bachan, which is B-A-C-H-A-N. And that word is the same, same word for experiment. 
And that word <coughs> intestine comes up again that I mentioned earlier on. The second word for trial is the word uh, evaluation. I like that word, evaluate. Because evaluation speaks about the quality of your life. Don't just live a, 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 a life is must be simple, but don't but don't embrace you know the the easy or the common things in life just because you want to go by. You need to evaluate all the time so that you can see you know quality in your life, a different standard that you set for yourself, and people outside will see it. You know, the kind of standard that you set for yourself. And then uh, the last word for trial is a trial run. Which is synonymous to trial. It's a trial run. So sometimes you go through because you know where you want to go to next. So you go through a trial run. They do that in business. Or they do that uh, in, uh, uh, in, in sport uh, where they have like a, a mock, uh, a, a match that, that is, uh, you know, just uh, trials to see uh, what, who is going to be the best, who is going to be the most suitable candidate for the test or the challenge that lies ahead of us. Hello? So in the olden days, what we used to do is there were trial matches that were played. That, you know, is a, a simulator of the test that is to come. And maybe out of four teams, they will have one team that will be elected, you know, that has gone through that trial run. Amen? Amen. So I just, I just want to encourage you, saints, that, you know, when you go through the different trials in your life, you need to understand that God has handpicked you for what is to come. Amen? Amen. And it is those who pass the test. Go and read Hebrews chapter 11 and see through how many trials that men and women of God, how many trials that they've gone through. And how God, you know, brought them through those trials and they became champions in their field. They became uh, conquerors in their field. They became overcomers in their field. We'll go to the scriptures in a minute. And the last one, tribulations. The, the words for tribulation is the word distress, struggle. Uh, I, I don't want you to uh, fool yourself and, 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 and think about the struggle in a political context. <laughs> Talking about real struggles. Amen. The word of God says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's a real struggle. But against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, spiritual wickednesses in high places. So, Jacob went through that struggle. He went through that battle in his life until he went through the struggles of struggles where he wrestled with an angel and held on to that angel and says, I will not let you go until you bless, I, you bless me. So sometimes, you know, don't be in a hurry to let the struggle go. There is something in the battle. I say there is honey in the carcass. I say there is something inside the battle. Now sometimes when you leave that battle prematurely, you, you sit with the battle scars, but you did not get the victory out of the battle. So it is critical for you not to let the struggle go. And be defeated by the struggle. But hold on to the struggle. I say hold on to the struggle until you win the battle. And when you win the battle, you get the spoils. The word of God says, Abraham went after the five kings. Oh, you don't hear me, saints. This is your struggle. This is your battle. And the victory is yours in the battle. Ah, you don't hear me, saints. You know, just think about uh, the, the, the purse. You know, when there's a fight, there is a purse. When there's a heavyweight championship fight, there is a purse. 
And you look at the end of 10 rounds. The guy's eyes closed. Blood flows from his, 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 his brow or his face. You know, he's sweat, sweating. You can see uh, how he prepared himself for the battle. You see how muscular he is when he stepped into that ring. Because I'm ready for, this is my struggle. Now the spectators around him, they are cheering and all of that. And you know, sometimes you can hear them. Uh, if this guy is in trouble, you know, maybe he's floored during the fight. Uh, you know, he falls down and he, and he rises up again. He beat the count of, 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 of eight or, uh, you know, uh, and, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he fights again until he gets to the final round and waits for the announcer to make the, the, the final uh, decision and then the points. And you can hear when, when there's, a, there's always three judges. And then one judge call the fight, uh, you know, in favor of his adversary. One fight, one judge score in favor of him. And now they're waiting for the final verdict. And when that final verdict comes, the, the victor forgets about the pain. He forgets about, you know, the, the knocks and forget about all the, the, the times that he almost lost the fight. What is... You know, key is the crown, number one, or the championship belt. And what is key next is the prize money for that fight. So, was it worth it to go through the fight? I said, was it worth it to go through the fight? Imagine that man said, or that uh, 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 boxer said before the fight, or maybe a uh, when the foul fight or his opponent was announced, he says, no, don't give me that struggle. Don't give me that fight. Imagine Mayweather did not fight those 50 fights that he fought, you know, during his, his career. Where would he have been today? Or Mike Tyson and all these guys. But these guys have got today, they have the battle scars, but they have got a list of victories. And what made them from one champion to go from one championship to the next one is because they evaluated themselves against their previous victories. Yeah. Come on, saints. So you go and ask anyone who is a champion, anyone that is a victor, uh, you know, that are victorious, you know, the things that they had to go through in order for them to stand on that podium, in order for them to say that I am the, I am victorious. Imagine what Christ, Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of your faith, had to go through in order for him to say, it is finished. It was not something, you know, that he just did overnight. It was something that was prophesied. It was something that was said throughout all the ages. And remember, the word of God says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And that word became flesh. So long before his existence, the word was on trial. I want to say that again. I say long before his existence, the word went through the fire. Long before his existence, you know, or when it be long before he came in the flesh, you know, the word was tried, the word was tested, the word was put on display, the word was put out there, and the enemy was looking for that valuable seed. He was looking for that word and how to destroy that word. But God said, he says, I will watch over my word in order to perform it. I decree over your life today. There was a word that God has spoken in your life. Uh, and the reason why the tests and the trials came in your life, according to the four parables in the word of God, he says the word, the, the trials comes for the sake of the word comes for the word's sake. Is there no word in you? Don't expect any, any test. Don't expect any trial in your life. But I decree today that the, the reason why the enemy comes, you know, after you is because there's something that God has deposited in your life that is going to come to pass. I say there is something that God has released in your life. I say His word is from everlasting to everlasting. 
His word will not change. I say his word will not return void unto him. I say his word is not going to come back without fruit. The word is not going to come back without a harvest. I say that word is not going to come back because he says I watch over my word to perform it. Hallelujah. I say he's watching over his word in order to perform it. So when, the, when you go through the three T's in your life, uh, I say the test, uh, the trial, and the tribulation, it is because of the word. I say the test, the trial, and the tribulation. Say three T's. Say always be aware of the three T's in your life. It is the test, the trial, and the tribulation is not after you. It's after the word. It's after that which God has spoken. You know, many times you go out there and you say, man, I received the word from the Lord. Be careful. Because the minute the word settles, when the minute the word comes, the Bible says the birds of the air comes for the sake of the word. The stones come because they want to choke. The very life out of the word. But I believe right now that what we have done over so many decades, what we've done over so many years, we have cleaned up the ground. We have removed the thorns. I say we have removed the stones. We have removed, you know, every obstacles. We have turned the ground. We have done what we are supposed to do. And I decree that the, the ground is ready for 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold to come forth. And many of you in this house today, I decree right now, you will see a thousandfold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the, the soil has been prepared. I say the soil has been prepared. And today we are saying uh, that you will be triumphant uh, in the test. Uh, you are going to be triumphant in the trial. And you are going to be triumphant in tribulation. Amen. Hallelujah. First Peter uh, the chapter 6 uh, sorry First Peter chapter 1 and let's start reading from verse 6 hallelujah the word of God says in all this everybody say in all this, in all this. you greatly rejoice that's how believers look at trials. Trials, please, <laughs> don't moan when the trials come. Don't, don't, don't complain when the trials come. I don't know what you say for moaning, cousin. So go colors a car, a corner, when the trials come in your life, don't, don't kalaza, bonga. When trials come in your life, you should not complain. Now listen to this. The word of God says, though now for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trial. Say to your neighbor next to you, say in all kinds of trial. Say, Mom Tiny, I know all kinds of trial. I'm Kabeka, I know all kinds of trial. Pastor Viani, I know all kinds of trial. Is there anyone here that know all kinds of trial? All kinds of trial. A basket full of trials. A, a mixed masala of trials. Different types of trials. <laughs> the trials that makes you say, Hanukh is Hanukh. The trials that says, I will take you and go. Trials that say, I shoot him. I don't want any more trials. You know, all kinds of trials. So the word of God says, though now for a little while you may have had suffered grieving all kinds of trials, 
These have come so that they have proven the genuineness of your faith. The reason why the trials came, he wants to prove the genuineness of your faith. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I said, you know, uh, the, the world out there says, fake it until you make it. You say, I will faith it until I make it. No, no, no. I want you to understand real faith. So you need to know, you know, how to employ real faith. So when the world, when, when the trials of life come, they mustn't find faith built on sand or a house built on sand. Because, you know, there are two houses that were built. One house that was built on the sand and one house that was built on revelation, knowledge, and understanding of the word of God. Jesus said to Peter, he says, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So let's not be in the church and don't understand this faith. You need to understand how resilient to be by understanding the kind of faith. Can't build with shipwreck faith. Come on, saints. You can't build with weak faith. You can't build with, uh, you know, su superficial faith. You know, you, all, you, you speak all the language of faith. <laughs> but when the test comes, it shows the genuineness of your faith. How genuine is the faith on the inside of you? God help us. That our faith is found in the simplicity of what God said faith is. It's the substance of the things that we hope for. It's the evidence of the things that we don't see. And I want you to understand that the faith that we're talking about is not faith that is, that is, that is informed by our, our immediate surroundings. You know, sometimes you look for a, you look for a security. And once you have the 500 rand, once you have the 10,000, once you have the 100,000, you say, now I'm going to believe God. <laughs> and then you go and you buy the thing and say, the Lord has provided. Uh -uh. God did not provide. That's your own doing. Because that thing will not be sustained when the trials and the tests comes. So what you need to do in your life, you've got to employ, employ real faith. You've got to understand. And you've got to call those things that be not as though they were. So that God will manifest. And the word of God says we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Can you say amen? amen. So when you've never seen it, you believed it. When you did not have a fallback position, you still believed when you went through the trials of life, you still believed. When, when everybody told you to give up, you say, no, I know my Redeemer lives. When everybody say, it is a hopeless case, you say, no, I am going to win this battle. Come on, saints. Until God shows up. Until God comes through and manifests himself, you know, in the midst of your trial. In the midst of your suffering, in the midst of the fire, when you had to go through, you know, that, that those waters, when you had to go through the fire, you say, I know that God is with me. And I, I know he's not going to fail me. So I know he's going to take me through. And you go out on the other side and you say, I am more than a conqueror. Amen. So you're not moved. So listen to this. The word of God says in all these things, the key is to rejoice. The key is not to complain. The key is not to tell everybody how you feel and, you know, uh, this is bad and it's getting worse and it's not getting better. And, you know, you try now to, to, to find ways to go through it. Hallelujah. The word of God says, these have come so that they may prove the genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which, which perishes, even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Christ is revealed. So Christ is going to be revealed in your situation. And he's going to be glorified. Because Jesus Christ is Lord. The word of God says, 
that um, God highly exalted him and he gave him a name that is above every name. That had the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow. I don't know what the name of your trial is. What the name of your situation is. But the word of God says every knee shall bow. Of things called in heaven, in the earth and under the earth. Whatever their name is. I want you to know and I want you to understand that there is a name that is higher than every other name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So Christ will be revealed in your suffering. Amen. Christ will be revealed in your test. Christ will be revealed in your trial. Amen. Hallelujah. He will always show up. You know, I don't know how it works. But don't give up at the last minute of your trial. What did the devil want you to do when you go through the greatest test in your life? He wants you to... The enemy wants you to talk. He wants you to talk too much. When you go through the greatest test in your life, learn to be... The Bible says, be still and know... That I am God. Amen. Amen. So you've got to be quiet. In your trials. In your tests. Embrace. What is quiet? <laughs> you must be quiet. <laughs> you, you must not speak aloud. You must not, you must not retaliate with words. Because those words that you speak is the very words that the enemy is going to use to defeat you. So he wants you to react. He wants you to retaliate because he wants to take your words and he will crucify you with your words. So don't say anything. Because when the trial comes, when the test comes, you know, he wants to reveal what is in your heart. But if your faith is genuine, you are not going to be moved. When your faith is genuine, we said last week, you want to look at the enemy up and down. You're not going to be moved by him. You're not going to be moved by the trial in your life. Amen. Listen to this. Psalm 139 verse 23 to 24 says, Search me God and know my heart. And test me and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there's any offensive way in me. Lead me to the way everlasting. Psalm 139 23 to 24. Amen. So God will search our hearts. He will test our hearts and see, uh, another translation says, see if there's any wicked ways in me. So our devotion, our prayer, our time that we spend with God is to continuously search our hearts, to remove those things that is in our hearts that can stop you from achieving or, uh, you know, accomplishing the breakthrough that God has for your life. Come on, listen to this. Let's go and look at John 16 verse 33. He says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. And in this world you will have trouble. In this world, don't say you will have blessings. And you're going to have prosperity. Yes, blessings and prosperity is there. But you must understand that in this world you will have trouble or trials and tribulations. Amen. But take heart. I have overcome the world. So the world with all its troubles, the world with all its issues, the world with all its demons, the world with all its poverty, the world with all its sickness, all its diseases, all his mind games, and everything that the enemy brings against you. The word of God says, in this world, you're gonna, you will have trouble. Because, the, you know, trouble is, let me just say this. Believers attract trouble. You're like a magnet for trouble. Come on. I don't know if you've seen, when light shines, there's always stuff that flies around that light. Come on. So you attract things because your light shines. But look at that light. It just continues to shine. 
The next day you see all those things that were around that light is lying everywhere. Come on. Don't be, don't be perturbed and be, uh, uh, you know, worried about trouble around you. I want to say that again. Don't, don't panic when trouble comes. Remember, the disciples goes to Jesus Christ down in the boat. Says, Master, the wind is blowing, the storms is on the sea. We are going to sink. What was Jesus doing? He was sleeping. He was not worried. When he eventually go up, went, uh, you know, woke up, he went up, looked across the sea. Did he scream? Did he panic? Did he shout? What did he say? He said, peace. Be still. And the storm conformed to the condition of his whole demeanor. If you want to calm a storm, you must be calm. I want to say that again. If you want to if you want to deal with strong winds, you can't add to the winds with your own, uh, what do they call, tornado. <laughs> Sometimes we need to watch how we pray. Your prayer will show whether you are, are calm or whether you are, you know, panicking. Somebody say, no, there's a demon here. No, 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 no. no. No, 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 no. When there's a demon, you say, come out of him. Be calm. Don't scream and shout. Because the demons see, ah, okay, when? <laughs> you don't know your authority. You don't know your, you don't know your power. Jesus didn't even speak to the demon. Uh, when Jesus came, the demon screamed. Said that you come to cast us out prematurely. So in this era, we are screaming and the demons are quiet. <laughs> come on, saints. You've got to be, you've got to be calm in the situation. You say, no, no, there is, there is something, there's an attack. Now we, no, 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 no. When there's an attack, you need to understand how you're going to deal with the situation. What, 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 what artillery are you going to apply in that situation? Map things out in the spirit. And decide which principalities and powers are you going to bind who is the stronghold in that situation that you've got to deal with? Don't go into panic mode. Whether, whether you owe a five rand or whether you owe five million, it's, it's immaterial. It needs the same measure of faith. Let's, 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 let's find out this thing that I'm saying to you now. So Romans chapter 8 verse 18 says, I consider that our present suffering are not be compared with the glory that will be revealed in us. So there's a greater glory than your suffering. There's a greater glory than your present situation. There's a greater glory than your present test and your trial that you're going through in life. Now, I love this scripture. There's a gem that I found in the scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17 to 18. I'm going to wait until you find that scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 4. For 17 to 18, I want you to go home and I want you to take lipstick or a, 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 a marking pen and write the scripture on your mirror and meditate on the scripture for the rest of 2024 because it's going to carry you through. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 17 to 18. I don't think that many of you might have never heard of this word. The word of God says, But the Lord stood at my side. And gave me strength. And that through me the message might be fully proclaimed. And all the Gentiles might hear it. 
I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. The devil goes about like a roaring lion seeking those whom he may devour or may destroy. But the word of God says through the word that was spoken by, in this case, by the Apostle Paul or by the messenger of the word, the Bible says that God has rescued me from the lion's mouth. <laughs> you can't be closer to trouble than that. Come on. I say, you can't be closer to trouble than that. Right at the lion's mouth where the enemy wanted to come and deal the death blow to whatever you were busy with, your business, your family, your church, your children, your, your life, your, your, your health, uh, your, your, your finances, whatever it is that the enemy tried to, you know, deal the death blow to. The word of God says, God came and he delivered you from the lion's mouth. And many of you that are watching us today on uh, social media, uh, you've been in that place in your life where you know that this is it. It's going to end here. I'm going to fail in this situation. But the word of God says that God came through and he delivered you. He has literally taken you out from that place and he has delivered you from the lion's mouth. Amen. The king took Daniel and he threw him in the lion's den. And the next morning, like with every other martyr that went before him, the king thought he would just find bones lying around. A man destroyed. A man who have once again failed like everyone else that went before him. And, but when the king got there, he found that the God of Daniel delivered him from the lions. Hallelujah. God will lock, literally lock the mouths of your enemy. Whatever it is that are threatening you, that are speaking loud in your face, that says you're not going to make it, you're not going to do it, you're not going to achieve, you're not going to accomplish, you're not going to have success, you are not going to achieve certain things in life. I want to tell you that thing's mouth is locked. I see that thing's mouth has been closed. That devourer, that dragon, that, that enemy, that snake, whatever it is, uh, I decree today that that thing's mouth is closed today. Because the God who closed the mouths of lions in that day is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he has done then, he will do it again in your life. Uh, because every time, you know, God shows up in a situation, he doesn't change. Amen. I say God never changes. Hallelujah. So what did, what, did, what did this month of July prove to us? That it doesn't matter how great the test. You can go up. up here. Doesn't matter how great the test. God will always come through. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 to 2. He says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race that is marked for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. You will perfect that is, which is yours. Amen. You've heard in the word this morning. The word for the praise and worship team. The word for city of David. The word that God has spoken. The, 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 let me just rephrase that. The essence of the message has not changed. Amen. The golden thread of what God said over all these years have not changed. Amen. God never changed his mind. Amen. Whatever he would do in your life, you will perfect. Can you say amen? amen? Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 to 18, he says, For our light and momentarily troubles 
are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighed them all so that we fix our eyes not on what is seen but on the unseen since what is seen is temporary but the things that are not seen the word of God says those are eternal 2 Corinthians 4 17 to 18 what is seen is temporary your present situation is temporary what you see right now is temporary. Yes. But what is not seen is eternal. Mm -hmm. And what the enemy is after is after that faith that believe in the unseen. That believe in the unseen world. That believe in the things, saints, that are there in the realms of the spirit that only God can do. I said that only God can do. Let us all stand in the house of the Lord this morning. Say with me again. Say the test, the trial, and the tribulation is temporary. So there's four T's. The test, the trial, the tribulation is temporary. It's not eternal. So you need to, you need to identify. When you go through stuff in your life, you need to identify that this is a test. You need to evaluate where do you stand in that test? How much have you grown? Amen. Remember the illustration that we made in the beginning? The five rand versus the 5,000 or the 500. The five, 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 five. The five rand, the 500, the 5,000. When you used to earn 500 rand, and you lost five rand. You spend the whole day looking for five rand. And you get nervous and you get worried. I've lost five, five rand. But today, if you lose five rand, whilst you are earning 5,000, are you worried? Are you nervous? Why? It's because you have 5,000. When you had 500, five rand was valuable. Now that you have 5,000, five rand is just one of those things. My prayer is that you will grow to the point that 5,000 is not going to be an issue. That you will be able to sow it without reservation in your heart. Because you now have migrated to 50,000. You've now migrated to 500,000. You've now migrated to 5 million because those things should not move you. Now the same with your faith. As your faith grows, a headache is nothing. And as your faith grows and somebody comes in here with a, with, a, with a deaf ear because God healed the headache, the deaf ear is nothing. Come on, saints. Somebody tells you that I'm about to lose my house. You tell that person that God can do anything. You tell him that God is able. Because you know how God opened doors in your life and how God began to bless you in the area, you know, where you received in your life. Land, houses, and things in your life that you never thought you would have.